makes this install really easy. You can see power is still the same four prong. You can see here I went ahead and set up um, all our data input. So you see I have all the wires open in the Nimia cable. Plotter. I'm gonna go compare this to the upstairs one to see how easily it's gonna fit. Knowing a boat project, probably not very. This is a new seven inch Zeus 3. Our old one, the touchscreen is like completely broken. So it powers up and it displays, but all the touch functions don't work. You can see nothing, nothing beeps, but I can navigate quite a bit with the controls. It makes it very difficult to engage the radar, to click on AIS targets, to zoom in. Um, our other one's seven inches, so hopefully they fit in the nav pod well. Um, the inputs should be the same, the power plug is the same, uh, the Mia 2000 will be the same, and this is an Ethernet connection for our radar. So the new chart plotter was in the box. It's not too bad. The box Bill's referring to is the giant package that arrived, miraculously still completely intact, that we had shipped here to Bocas del Toro, Panama. We've been back on board for over a week, spending our time getting Calico Skies back into cruising shape again. Now that she's wasp free, it's time to get to work on some projects. So yeah, that box just came in that, uh, that generated some work for me today, but um, it's a good thing. This is a new seven inch Zeus 3. Um, our old chart plotter functions, but the touch display is not working. Um, so we can navigate quite a bit of it with the buttons, but not everything. So we're moving it down below. Um, in order for a chart plotter to be useful though, it needs data. So I'm gonna be running connections today that give it the necessary data. The Namiya stuff should be pretty easy because that's located right next door in the electronic locker. Um, but I need to run ethernet, which is where our radar and chart data comes from. So that's gonna be run through the boat and that'll be a bit more work. Um, another piece of thing we're doing to refresh our nav station is uh, installing a Serbo GX, which links up all the data from our various Victron products that we have. We have four solar controllers, we have a battery monitor, we have an inverter charger, and it takes all that data and summarizes it onto one color display. Um, so it's gonna make my life a lot easier. And we got patron actually gave it. Yeah, one of our patrons gave it to us, which was Shane. awesome. Yeah, Thank Shane, it's so such much. a nice gift. I have to go add new instruments as well. We're doing new wind and depth, and that'll all be in Namiya 2000 from our Namiya 0183 network. So um, it doesn't change anything at the chart plotter, but all the devices that are run through the boat will now have to be hooked up into the backbone of the Namiya network. So um, I'm just gonna see if those will fit. I might have to cut the nav pod or who knows. TBD. TBD. The other thing is that to find a security driver for the nav pod itself. The nav pod is the little white case that the chart plotter sits in for security purposes, and they have security drivers, so it's a special like. When you say security, do you mean? It's basically like a you know like a Allen key, but they put a hole in the center. They put like a sticking out hole, so you can't jam an Allen key in there. So oh, it has like a special tool to get in there, just, like, steal the chart it. plotter. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I gotta go try to dig out this nav pod key, or I won't be going anywhere with this. But I'm gonna take it upstairs and go check it out. I did find the nav pod tool. See how there's a pin in the way in that hex? So this just fits right in there to remove it. Pretty big screws. Last screw here. Okay, so I have the old one off. Uh, it's like 5200 in or something. The power cables, which makes this install really easy. You can see power is still the same four prong. Uh, the Ethernet's the same. Yellow, yellow. And the Mia 2000 is obviously the same as the Mia 2000. So the actual install, like minus the nav pod, shouldn't be that bad because all the cables already run to the helm, which is huge. Yeah, this is 
stopped up at like 5200 or something. Oh, held up for 30,000 miles, so this was not installed by me is why I keep referring to someone else. We actually had this installed while we were working, Grace and I. Different time back in the hedge fund days when I had to work weekends and basically all the time, so. Hey, it fits, what do you know? Hey, that's pretty good. Winning. <laughs> this, uh, that's so rare that they cut the hole too big for this one. So that's actually kind of nice for me. It's kind of been good to us. I'm just putting the connections back together now. Okay, that's in. I'm gonna go ahead and power on the chart plotter now. All right, so she's going ahead and booting up. While it's booting up, you could see that I went ahead and glued this into the nav pod and put on the trim pieces now, so it has a much nicer finished look to it. So when you get a new chart plotter, you have to go ahead and pick the various sources of data on a network. So the chart plotter won't recognize immediately like where we're getting wind data from, where the GPS is coming from, where the autopilot is, where the radar is. All those things you have to go through and make sure they're communicating properly. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. I'm going to go into network. I'm going to go to sources. And in here, for instance, position, um, I have to click, OK, the GPS data is coming from the chip inside this chart plotter. Now it'll give us our position data. So I have to go ahead and go to my apparent wind. OK, it's coming off our wind instruments. And next thing I'll go ahead and check is that the radar data is here. Let's see. Is the radar able to transmit? Radar is in standby. That's a good sign. Um, let's make sure the autopilot works. OK, that works. That's a good sign. OK. Um, yeah, so that's pretty good. So basically, to recap, though, this chart plotter, will, will, when it comes out of the box, will not know your individual network, because every network is different. So the way you go ahead and, and align all the data sources, go to your go to sources, and then you have a whole list of different inputs. And you just go ahead and make sure everything is properly selected so you get all the data you need. You can see here, I went ahead and set up um, all our data inputs the way we used to have it. All these boxes are customizable. Like you can see, we have wind, we have our log, we have the wind angle, we have speed. So everything is working. AIS is showing up. So that's good. Autopilot's here. Yeah, so everything, everything looks good. Nice. That was actually pretty... That was pretty seamless. I think it helps seamless. getting the same uh, brand char plotter that makes the install a lot easier. Because yeah. it's all the same cabling, but... everything's g for the win? d for the win for us on this one, yeah. Next, Bill works on the connections. The old char plotter that we're repurposing to the nav station here needs power and Namiya. While he's doing this, Bill also makes Namiya connections for the new wireless wind denominator we'll be installing, as well as a new electronic barometer. First up is the Namiya cable. I'm trying to run the Namiya drop cable for the chart plotter through this hole, but it won't fit. When I was in the States, I actually picked up, this is called a Namiya field installable connector. So I could just cut this cable, it makes it easier to run. This is the female end of it. Um, so I'm gonna cut this off and run it through. Okay. Okay, it's coming through. So you can see this is like the RF shield, this, this stuff here and tin foil. What's an RF shield? Radio frequency, it keeps like the communications in here from interfering with like the VHF and stuff like that. See, so I have all the wires open in the Nimia cable. It's all color coded and it corresponds to the color codes here, so it's pretty easy to st stick them in and screw it down. Okay, here we go. starting to get this power cable crimped together. The red and yellow go together. The blue is for an external alarm. So I actually bought some of these in the States too. I'm gonna wire this in. I'm thinking when we're offshore, it might just be good to have an audible alarm down here. Beeping as well as outside, just if, in case we're snoozing or something, I feel like it's good to have a really noticeable collision alarm. So this will provide power, and here's a little alarm going to here. This is a standard B&G cable. And next, I have to remove the T's up here and pop into the Namiya network. Let's see how this works. Namiya is up here now. Let's see all the T's. Next, Bill works on running the Ethernet cable for the old chart plotter, which is required because certain data types, such as radar, are too large to be transmitted through the Namiya 2000 network. Because both chart plotters will use radar data inputs, the cable will be run through the network expansion port. 
this box located in our forward port side cabinet, which functions like a router would. Well, what we're doing today is we're running a second ethernet cable to the chart plotter down here, so it can have radar data. So the cable runs from here, and ran it down through here, through this locker, uh, across the top of the bilge on the stringers, uh, through, it came through this locker here, and now we're over here. So this is the end. Which is now we're on the starboard side of the boat. The other thing to make it easier, I had to cut this, um, but luckily Ethernet is pretty easy to displace because running a port of this size would be pretty difficult. This is pretty, it's like an inch or two. So I cut it and then I'm gonna have to splice this together once I'm through all the bulkheads. And the last step here in installation is we have to drill another hole uh, about here. I've just been measuring it, trying to figure out where. Um, about here to pass this wire through to the box back there where the rest of the electronics are. And then I'll go ahead and splice this cable back. And then we should have radar data to that chart plotter as well, which will be nice on passage. We considered a couple different options for where to uh, put this thing. We're gonna drill it there. So the other side is inside the nav. <clears throat> nav table, it's gonna come out like there. I actually got pretty lucky. I mean, this is how much cable's left, so. How many feet is that? I think I got a 25 foot section. But it just, it just when you take all these turns, it just, you know, yeah. my mind, because I, I couldn't measure the runs in my mind, I was like, well, the boat's 36 feet. Like, how could I use a 25 foot cable? It is crazy. But then you start thinking about like all the twists and turns I had to make to get this cable through in a neat way. Um, yeah, so <laughs> it is what it is, but this is yeah. pretty lucky. I don't have that much left. I have like maybe two feet, two feet extra, three feet extra. here, which is actually pretty cool because the chip is on the chart plotter upstairs at the helm. Um, and now radar is also available on this display as well. So, you know, one radar is available on two screens. It's pretty sweet. Oh, and also that alarm I wired, it's pretty loud. You want to hear it? I am going to go to the top of the mast now to bring the wireless wind instrument uh, mounted up there. It's going to be a little interesting to try to film it. I'm going to take this head thing because, yeah, it might be a little dicey, but um, yeah, I'll take you guys with me. It's a very tippy top of the mast head, so it's kind of, it's always an uncomfortable place to work, but uh, I'll try my best. is to remove the old wind anometer, which includes the mounting bracket. Bill installs the mounting bracket for the new anometer. The 
doing it. <laughs> Unfortunately, he's dropped a drill bit, but he's come prepared with a backup, so it's all good. He goes back to installing the new bracket, beginning with drilling the first hole needed. Then he changes the bit so he can drive a screw into the mount before repeating the same process for the second, third, and fourth holes and screws. All right, well, mission accomplished. And I only dropped one bit in the water. Pretty nice sunset, too. So, one of the really cool things about the cruising community is it's never goodbye, it's always see you later. And it's funny because we made a friend with our buddy Max when we crossed the Atlantic and we were in the Azores together. He had single-handed across the Atlantic on a 22-foot wooden boat and he went back to the UK and he bought an old Swan 36 and restored it. And they're kind of selling around of a bunch of young people. So, And he just pulled into the anchorage here at Red Frog Marina. So we're gonna go over there and have dinner on his boat. I haven't heard that in a while. It's like being back on anchor, but yeah. So we're gonna go uh, meet these guys that we met in the Azores. Uh, pretty cool people. We were so excited when we met them because we were like, oh, young people. Um, and yeah, Max turned out to be such a cool guy. But anyway, we're gonna stop at Delos on the way, um, <laughs> have a drink with Brian and Kaza, and then uh, carry on. So, here we go. Hey guys. Hello. <laughs> So the eight people would be like two up front. Two, three, three four. Four, five, six, and then seven, eight. That'd be but you guys do the whole filming thing or not really? Like, yeah. You know, you're, you're just having with your face. Yeah. We met, Hi. we met, uh, <laughs> we met on TikTok. Yeah. <laughs> oh good. Okay. I tried to do some filming, but it's like, it's always really 
bad, wonky filming. Like, I've never done it. It doesn't earn me money, so. Yeah, right. <laughs> just gotta see your burrito making over here. It's like professional. Yeah. It's just one burner, you know? It's one thing I've never mastered, <laughs> wrapping a, a burrito properly. Oh, yeah. It's not an easy thing to do. <laughs> and also, we're like, this is a cool story because we met, you know, we met you five years ago. And now we're in crazy YouTubers. Yeah, I don't mind. Boy, yeah, I was you know, like, you're doing things. like up here? Mm. Nice. They're intense. I've never seen you. Yeah. It's a burrito. What does it feel like? We're running a space ball on a, uh, I think, like, 14. I'm gonna put zero in front of it. like, Oh. <laughs> this thing's, I mean, this thing's been on the boat for over 30,000 miles, so it's almost like kind of sad to say goodbye. It served us well. 30,000 miles? That's yeah, crazy. It does not away. sound good, though. No. <laughs> it's clearly, I mean, probably clean it up or something, or maybe the bearing, but, but yeah, this guy's, this guy's traveled, he spent a lot of time 50 feet up and for 30,000 miles going. <laughs> Pretty good. <laughs> Working on uh, installing the Servo GX. This device has a touchscreen and it combines all our Victron equipment. We have four solar controllers, we have an inverter, so we're just basically gonna tie all that together into one display. And actually, one of our patrons gave us a Servo GX. Um, Shane's the man. So there's all these different ports. So basically all this thing does is take in data from various inputs. These three can plug into a solar controller. Um, I'll do one more for a solar controller. And I think I'm gonna do ethernet for the multi-plus. So I'm connecting with these VE direct ports, which are right here. Um, I have special cables I got for them. Bill proceeds to connect each of the four solar controllers, as well as the inverter and battery monitor. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, all connected. I have the monitor connected. So I turned this guy on. You can see it's showing our solar coming in and nothing for the AC side right now. Supposedly this plug should be able to give the inverter data. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut this, hard wire shut this off, click. We're gonna go ahead and click this one in. Okay. Close the inverter panel up. So you can see we finally got the uh, inverter data coming in through the Servo GX now. So it's a pretty cool display, it just has a little bit of everything that's going on with our battery bank, like what the solar panels are doing, all four combined, what our shoreside dock power is doing, what kind of loads we're drawing from the boat, and how much the battery is giving. Pretty snazzy. You could also see that I went ahead and mounted the char plotter. So this is what our new nav desk looks like. It's kind of cool for an old boat. Mm -hmm. I, I like it, I'm excited. Like we have a lot of cool color screens and <laughs> the really nice thing is now the autopilot is hardwired down here, which we never had before because it was locked out. So I could say I could, I could adjust the autopilot from here. And that's, that's nice. Yeah, because we couldn't do that from the, that was the big difference with the, the iPad. Yeah, they, on the iPad, they lock out that function on you. Um, so, and also now we have two controllers. If something happened to it in one of the chart plotters, we have double ways to activate the autopilot, which is important. So I'm pretty pumped the way this all turned out. So this is our new nav desk. Let us know in the comments what you think of it or what else you would have added. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.